Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and I'm at it again. I'm making this uh, Dixon uh, Zero Turn Friction Drive uh, riding lawnmower better. And uh, I'm not talking about better inherently in the uh, uh, power transmission or the uh, uh, deck uh, uh, cutting. You know, those things are good already. I've uh, recently replaced the cones in this and I did a video and that turned out so well. Uh, I was so happy about it. aftermarket uh, seat suspension system, an insert under the seat, an existing seat, and uh, uh, that went so well. It takes up about the same height as the old, uh, uh, more simple, just a, a two-spring uh, mechanism that came with the Dixon. And, uh, you know, it makes for a pretty bumpy ride. It really just kind of throws you back in the seat uh, on the uh, original one. But this one has got a whole different kind of mechanism. The suspension system, you can see how the See, it just uh, swings up, and here it is exposed. Here's those springs, you know, they're uh, tension springs, not compression sc springs. It seems a little counterintuitive to see that uh, uh, as a suspension, but uh, sure enough, it works, and it's brilliant. Uh, now, I left uh, uh, it open at the back here, and I thought I could get away with making one piece, kind of like a, a horseshoe to uh, contain this. I had to cut out uh, uh, the sides and, and then uh, make a flat horseshoe just so it would uh, seat down onto this uh, compartment here. But I left the back end open because I thought I could uh, uh, kind of shoehorn the captivated bolts right there. There's a couple of bolts that were captivated there and I thought uh, leaving this open I could bend it and uh, uh, finagle them on, but no, nah, no such luck. I had to come down here and split this into two pieces and then put a plate across here to uh, made it back together there. And that's the adjustment uh, uh, nut. I had to cut that short and it weld on a, a nut back there because when it uh, hung out here, when I lifted uh, the lid, it would uh, touchdown and hit there so you know that had to go and you can see it's uh, mounted with bolts in the in the two pieces instead of the one bounce up and down I've got it adjusted to what I think is uh, pretty good for me but you can see in here that it's silent and that's because there's no there's no real uh, metal to metal impact and there's no metal to metal friction and I'm gonna utilize some of the uh, methods that they used in doing that uh, on the suspension here and uh, uh, do some things on the deck as well and uh, namely it's uh, the uh, uh, nylon washers that went so well that uh, I decided to uh, follow up because that seat uh, suspension is a uh, um, I believe a uh, uh, an option on uh, uh, John Deere mowers and uh, you know you can I suppose put them on the tractor style and the zero turns but uh, you can get it uh, as an option uh, and it uh, as a part through John Deere is about 300 bucks so you know I saved half that just uh, buying it uh, uh, directly from the, the place. This purchase of that uh, seat suspension it, it's uh, marketed directly on Amazon through, I, I believe it's the uh, producer and uh, seat warehouse here. And, you know, I'll often uh, uh, purchase on Amazon without uh, buying uh, from Amazon directly. They market a lot of stuff too, but it's better not to uh, go uh, through Amazon uh, for, you know, the sold by Amazon. Fulfilled by Amazon's okay, but uh, I always look for... Uh, uh, 
you know, purchases that are out of state tax free. And you can see all the uh, uh, customer comments on this. This is uh, where I uh, stumbled onto this uh, seat suspension because uh, I'm on, on Amazon a lot. I'm I'm a Christian anarchist, so you know I, I have no SSN or uh, TIN, and you know that makes uh, some purchases a little trickier. But uh, with Amazon, it's real easy. You just go in the supermarket, get a gift card, and uh, you know there's no uh, imposed fee. Uh, like on a Visa debit card and uh, a lot of good values on Amazon. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, things will arrive to me that I've uh, purchased on Amazon and they'll come from uh, like one time uh, I got some weather stripping and it arrived to me from Egypt. And uh, recently uh, uh, I got some little, uh, you know, small purchase of some electronic leads and uh, they came from Thailand, and of course, many things have arrived to me from uh, Asia and in China proper. And so, you know, I, I just kind of dig that because otherwise, I, you know, I can't make international purchases with a uh, with a debit card uh, that's not linked to a bank account and a TIN, SSN, blah blah blah. But I, I noticed uh, that John Deere also has uh, an upgrade. Uh, at their dealerships, uh, it's not a John Deere part per se, but they carry it as an option, and it's this uh, it's this Z Glide uh, suspension system, and uh, they're uh, surprisingly well priced, especially right through uh, uh, the maker uh, somewhere in uh, the middle of North America here, and. Uh, it was uh, two hundred nineteen dollars uh, free shipping, no uh, uh, tax paid, and. Uh, uh, you know, surprisingly, that uh, for the two of them is about the, uh, close to the same price as uh, one of these uh, uh, caster uh, spindle mechanisms for the uh, the Dixon parts. Because the Dixon parts are getting harder to find; they're they're not made anymore. So, and, but this you know this one has lasted about 25 years. It's got an actual uh, single bearing down below and just this sleeve up top. And, you can see it, it wears a little up top because they didn't put a bearing up here. So this becomes a little bit of sloppy and, you know, makes for a little chatter, I suppose. But, uh, you know, it's held up this long and, uh, you know, it, it could go longer. But uh, I decided to uh, upgrade just because I noticed that Z-Glide suspension. And there's a little bit of debate between people, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, you got the suspension and you know is is that uh, you know goes up and down that'll mess up your your cutting uh, quality and uh, but now people people that actually have them said no it's it's quite the opposite your deck doesn't bounce around so much because the the shocking system is uh, absorbing that so you know and I've seen video already and it, it seems to be the case the uh, the cuts uh, are not compromised at all with the front suspension but it makes the ride better, you know, and uh, let me tell you before I put on this uh, 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 suspension system on the seat, you know, a couple hours on this baby and, and your backside's a little a little bruised almost, you know, because it is, it's a, a short little thing and, uh, you know, I'm getting to, to an age now where I appreciate the comfort, you know, uh, you know, up until now, you know, I, I thought I was Superman. I, I, I don't need no stinking uh, suspension or shocking system on my lawnmower. No, no, not for me. Yeah, I was a tough guy, but uh, not so tough anymore. I, I, I like these creature comforts. There is that Z Glide uh, website. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're they're good for a lot of uh, uh, different mowers, but for the... Uh, the John Deere, these 200 and 300 series uh, have the same uh, uh, front wheel size as my uh, Dixon 9 inch tall. It probably accept uh, 10 or 11 inch wheel as well, but uh, that's what I did. I just went on the premise. Yeah, it's the uh, same wheel size, so that's the one I'll get. 219 for the pair of them, and uh, what a good value. And uh, they've got, uh, you know, the videos here, so... You know, you can get a good idea what what to expect uh, right at the outset. This video, uh, I, you know, is going to generalize not just with the Dixons because uh, you know these aren't made 
These aren't made for the Dixon model. They're uh, made for the John Deere, uh, Skag, uh, a few others, and uh, it's not really compatible with the uh, with the Dixons. And uh, but I'm going to make it work. You know, I like to weld, I like to fabricate, so I uh, I've got some uh, uh, material here that uh, you know will be the uh, sleeve for this uh, spindle here. And uh, instead of bearings uh, uh, like on the Dixon, this takes just some bushings. And, uh, you know, I, I don't hate that idea, you know. It, uh, it's, I suppose, fewer moving parts that way. And uh, if it's snug, uh, you know, and of course, uh, poly uh, composite plastic uh, bushings are cheaper. And, you know, they're easy to swap out. So I'm not uh, resisting uh, that. But... Uh, I found some uh, DOM tubing uh, online, I think it was uh, metals online for you, something like that, that had the uh, right inner diameter, I, I believe it was uh, one and an eighth. These uh, sh spindle shafts are one inch. Now the, uh, these uh, Dixon uh, spindle shafts are uh, three quarters, so you know it's not compatible. I can't just uh, put this in place of the other one. So. Here I am with the uh, DOM uh, tubing, and I've got the bushings. i got a few more parts coming, but I've got most of the materials, and uh, this is some of it. Oh, here's, here's one of these bushings, what they look like. Now, these are John Deere parts. I just went uh, with the premise that, uh, you know, I had a John Deere uh, uh, mower, and I, I got the one that matched the, uh, the smallest one, which... Uh, the John Deere series was uh, the Z300 series, and because uh, they take the same size wheel, the uh, four-inch uh, uh, wheel with the uh, oh the nine-inch tire. But uh, yeah, these uh, seat right down in there, real good. You really got to snug them in, so you you know it's a good fit. Mm. I'll see. See if I can show you briefly. Yeah, see there? It's just starting to seat down in there. And that's that's how the fit will be. And it's not bad. You know, it's not super precision like uh, like a bearing, but uh, I believe it's going to be uh, uh, have a good feel and be quiet too. And easy to uh, do maintenance. So, you know, I'm not hating this idea of uh, bushings. I know a lot of these mowers have gone, especially with the... Uh, the wheel bearings have gone to bushings. Mine still has bearings, so I, I like that. And uh, I, I think I'm gonna like the bushing. I'm sure I will. But anyway, not only uh, that, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually widen the two front wheels anyway. So I'm gonna be doing some fabricating. So if you want to see some of that, you will be. And there's that little chain I was talking about. See, it's, it's sloppy. It needs to be sloppy because these go up and down. That, that disc cup raises and lowers, but it will uh, tolerate, I believe, one more tooth on that little sprocket there so it isn't quite so sloppy, which may make uh, the uh, levers uh, a little more responsive. See, that's that's a, a little bit of slop there, and it may be reduced and give it a little better feel of, of responsiveness. And we'll get to all that deck stuff too. These, uh, these Z-Glide uh, uh, forks uh, take a uh, bolt across there that uh, holds the wheel, and it is uh, a 5 8 uh, diameter. So I, I got some more bearings. The uh, the old one there is a, a three-quarter bearing, but uh, those tires will accept either either bearing. Uh, 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 the outside di diameter is the same, but uh, uh, the inner bore uh, for the bearings uh, can be different and still fit that uh, outer diameter. I think the outer diameters uh, on these bearings are uh, one and three-eighths. The inside bore on this is 5 eighths, uh, so yeah, no problem. Either bearing works on those uh, 
wheel hubs. So yeah, that's the story, that's the overview uh, of uh, where I'm going. I'll get into the, the specifics uh, and uh, the fabricating, uh, which is really half the reason I do this stuff. I like to you know, find projects that I can weld and fabricate and, and cut stuff and make it better and you know, have a good old time. Now this, this wall thickness is pretty uh, uh, thick. This is, uh, oh, oh, I think it's 0 .313. And I did buy another piece of uh, metal from that uh, metalsonline.com. And this uh, has a, a very nearly the same inside diameter at uh, 1.12 rather than uh, 1.125, which this is. And, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if this would uh, uh, take the uh, bushing, but it does. Uh, the 1.12 uh, takes this bushing uh, quite well. You can see it's starting to seat down. And uh, the 1.125 one, does as well. They, they feel the same. You know, I always like to be uh, purchasing uh, out of state because that uh, leaves those uh, companies uh, uh, off of the burden of being an unpaid tax collector. Uh, you know, uh, these are uh, tax-free sales from out of state, so they don't have to be coerced, uh, you know, to collect taxes for the state, uh, you know, because the state doesn't do anything. They just, they just tax and force people to do and coerce people to do stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it doesn't hurt local businesses here, too, because if they have a, uh, an online presence, people from out of state are going to buy, uh, you know, closer to, to where you are. And so, you know, it's a wash, but, uh, you know, if, if productive companies have an online presence, they're not missing out on anything because other out of state buyers will buy from them. And, uh, you know, so you don't have to buy local. You're not hurting local either when you don't do that theoretically because other out-of-state buyers are, are buying from uh, the local companies and uh, uh, you know the odd man out is the, uh, the the state extortion racket which is a good thing. It's a quick look at that uh, metals online it's really onlinemetals.com but uh, I thought I'd give you a quick look at their uh, website because uh, it is handy and uh, you can see you can sort by uh, inside diameter. That was helpful uh, to me over Amazon. Amazon didn't have that kind of a, a search uh, for those products. So, you know, you have to really sift through Amazon to, you know, get at uh, these kind of uh, 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 DOM tubing uh, inner diameter sizes. And the DOM uh, tubing is uh, good because the... Uh, it's drawn over mandrel, you know, DOM, and that means you don't get that uh, coarse welded seam on the inside diameter, which is helpful, you know, when you're putting bushings uh, in stuff like that. So uh, metals, uh, online metals is uh, uh, where I go to, you know, look for stuff like this. And uh, again, they have that uh, tendency to offer a very small uh, uh, random lengths at a, a little cheaper size than uh, one full uh, uh, foot at a time. And, you know, you can buy just one foot at a time if you want as well. So, uh, you know, I'm not uh, compensated uh, or uh, sponsored by any of these uh, companies or product lines. So, but uh, it's just helpful that, uh, you know, you can hunt these uh, down so well. Okay, and with uh, just one little tack uh, right in the middle up top, you know, I didn't even have to pull this out any. It, uh, it's right in there. And uh, the same with the other side. So uh, I'm not a TIG expert. And uh, I'm only using uh, uh, 110 uh, 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 volt power. This uh, unattached garage doesn't have 220. But it's not a problem. Uh, I've got... Uh, 125 uh, amps on tap and I haven't popped the breaker yet you know I, I, I've never popped the breaker yet because you know I've only been here a short time and I'm still kind of finding the limits uh, of what this will do on 110 I've always used 220 in the past but I, I recently moved and uh, uh, no 220 here so uh, I'm using this uh, Everlast 210 EXT uh, 
on its uh, uh, dual voltage capacity, and it's the first time I've uh, been doing it that way, and uh, it's uh, it's doing fine. You know, even on this uh, uh, fairly thick wall uh, tubing, it's a, a small piece, but uh, you know, as I tacked, uh, the whole thing warms up, so you know, I'm not lacking for uh, heat input. You know, it, these are penetrating uh, beads, TIG welding. Uh, you know, I can get a, a good uh, route to pass, but I may put a, a second pass just to get more uh, more metal on this thing because, you know, it's holding those uh, wheels and spindles and bouncing around and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, let me just uh, do this and uh, I'll show you afterwards. I suppose I can just keep talking to it too, you know. But yeah, it uh, fogs up the lens if I talk. So I'm going to keep that to a minimum. Even though I do like to talk. The tape has got a wobble in it. But yeah, there it is, you know, amateur TIG welding, not bad, but uh, yeah, I might uh, put more metal on there, but single pass, I could probably uh, be fine with, with just the one pass and, and not uh, sweat it, but uh, I think I will, I think I'll put some, a second pass, more metal, or maybe just put a, an autogenous weave pass there with no more metal. The, I would guess the base uh, metal dilution uh, was about 25% with about 75% filler. This is only 1 16th and uh, you know I didn't want to use a bigger filler because that chills the puddle and again I'm, I'm you know kind of limited on the amps uh, with the 110 power but uh, I like to use a 1 16th uh, filler anyway. I like to have a nice uh, small bead in the root there and uh, blah 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 so yeah it's going well part number uh, for these uh, uh, axle bolts and you can see it's a, a shoulder bolt and uh, uh, these holes have the uh, larger diameter here and the smaller one so that shoulder uh, uh, theoretically uh, cinches up tight with this uh, locking uh, nylon uh, nut. Okay, and there it is, uh, cinched up. Uh, you can see uh, I could probably get uh, another turn on it, but uh, I wanted to leave uh, that uh, where it is because you can see the bearing isn't uh, turning quite as freely if I had, uh, oh, about a half less turn on, on this, but I'm going to this, this is going to be fine. I don't think it's going to impinge on that bearing too much. And I'm going to let that bearing break in uh, a bit and then maybe I'll get another turn on this but as you can see there's a little bit of arch on the uh, uh, fork arm here you know apparently that's inherent in the uh, design and the uh, length of the bolt you know they uh, expect a little bit of flexion and and uh, arching to meet that uh, tolerance on that uh, shoulder there Okay, and here it is with the uh, front uh, body panel removed. You can see it over here. I just wanted to show you what my thinking is for going ahead and uh, replacing this whole cross member instead of just cutting off these, uh, these little uh, sleeves here uh, because I wanted it wider. I've uh, uh, added a, a, a wider deck, a 32-inch... Uh, no, no, it's a 42-inch deck. It, previously, it was a 30-inch single blade. There's three blades now. But uh, with the wider deck and still having these uh, set into where they were for a 30-inch deck, I tend to uh, overlap on my cut cuts because uh, each row, you know, it, it, this was a visual guide, and uh, it, it always tended me to 
uh, be too conservative in how wide I stepped out. So I'm putting another couple inches on these and that'll keep the uh, wheel in the same uh, track pattern as the back wheel. That, that back wheel used to be inset more there. It's an offset hub. So I just flipped that uh, wheel around. So even though it causes the valve stem to be on the inside, that's not a problem. I can still feel the tires, but it did. It set the wheel off uh, in the back uh, about three inches wider, which was good uh, since I have the wider depth. But still, that's not really wide enough to, uh, I don't want to meet the tires to the deck. But uh, I do want to keep this uh, front wheel in the same uh, uh, track pattern. And I believe the uh, uh, this first one was oh on the inside of that track. And coming out two more inches, we'll put it just on that outer side so you know you won't be able to see two wheel uh, patterns on each side and sure enough this unbolted uh, relatively easily and uh, um, you know it uncovered a couple of things that uh, are helpful uh, I think uh, since I'll have this on the bench I'll do some build up here this has worn over time with this rod going through so you know I'll be able to build that up and keep this uh, nice and straight there without that divot in it and maybe I'll do that on the rod too it's uh it's a little worn so I can build that up and grind it uh, back in a fairly round uh, shape I'm digging it uh, this thing uh, just being so uh, loose and free it'll give me uh, uh, the ability to put these uh, uh, welds in any position and you know I'll just use these the uh, quick uh, uh, cutoff grinder or even this uh, little uh, reciprocating uh, uh, cordless uh, thing if uh, I need to get into other spaces where that disc won't fit because that is a, a little tight there I'm not sure if I can get the cutting disc all the way down there maybe and so there it is I believe all the welding is done now you can see those uh, uh, little small beads on both sides just so I don't blob it on too much I, wanted to glob it on pretty well on that side and, and also uh, on the front side but that's that's about it there's uh, I don't know about six points uh, one two three four five six seven eight points uh, and uh, that's all that's needed I believe uh, uh, you know the the front two caster wheels you know they probably only have about 50 pounds of uh, weight on each point they're out front there uh, the rear wheels uh, really uh, probably uh, take most of the weight of the unit and maybe you can see where I'm going with this uh, this is what I've got some of these uh, uh, deck uh, uh, adjustment uh, rods L rods with the little quick pin up top uh, how you hang a deck and uh, I got some new pins uh, they didn't have threads going up as high as I, I want for what I'm going to do, so I'm, uh, I'm threading uh, this a little further down. It, uh, it doesn't uh, really give uh, the same height of threads, because I'm cutting the threads. Apparently these were pressed in, and so the uh, threads uh, sit up a little prouder than the rod itself, but that's not a problem. You can see that uh, here, how where I've uh, threaded is it's just not as uh, tall as the uh, regular threads, the factory threads, but it doesn't matter because uh, the uh, flanged uh, uh, nut I have uh, up there, it, uh, it just goes up to the top and stops and uh, uh, that'll create uh, a seat for this uh, spring. And uh, it, it's really pretty efficient to just uh, uh, you know throw that nut up there after threading the rod uh, a little further and then you've got uh, uh, you know a compression spring in there that's gonna uh, make the deck uh, you know a little less uh, uh, jumbly and jangly when you're going over uh, rough stuff so we'll see how that works I I don't I've never seen anybody do it before uh, so okay I'm getting ready to uh, uh, fit it up here and you can see I I've still got this uh, front section loose, these uh, three bolts on each side, they're carriage bolts, I like that, you, you only use one wrench, but uh, I'm leaving it loose uh, up front here as I uh, lower the jack stand, you can see the wheels are almost touching on both sides, but uh, as I lower it, 
boom, that one's not turning. That one's turning a little. Another half a turn. Okay, now it touches down. So that's pretty good. But the bolts, you know, will float. Whatever side is uh, deficient, you know, a slight tolerance different difference, it'll take that up. So uh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it uh, well. So I'll tighten that up, and then I'll check to see uh, how much... Uh, spring uh, action you get, you know, as far as uh, when it's sprung and it's unsprung. The old uh, cross member there. But uh, it had that uh, that spring system up top here. It, it wasn't a suspension, it was like a reverse suspension so that, you know, when this thing uh, you're rolling along and you hit a little trench or something on, on one side and the, the front wheel uh, loses momentary contact that uh, this spring action would uh, actually the weight of the wheel when there's no contact to the ground would allow the uh, wheel to touch down and always stay oriented so it's not flailing around when it uh, loses contact and I always kind of like that feature on uh, the Dixon even this uh, you know one-sided uh, uh, attachment to the uh, the wheel. I, I just, uh, I thought it was kind of clever. And, uh, you know, I knew that with this uh, spring action here, you know, there's uh, an inherent uh, uh, feature in that, in that, you know, when it gets unsprung, you know, due to a, a little trench you're rolling around on, it probably uh, uh, reaches down a little bit to uh, stay oriented. And uh, the weight of the wheel and the uh, caster doesn't really seem to allow it to drop down. It's pretty close. I uh, I thought I was leaving a little bit of a gap in this for play so it would drop down before it hit the uh, spring tension, but after these bushings, uh, the, the gaps for those uh, uh, took up some of that uh, space I left. So there's no there's no uh, uh, play. It, uh, it's right about at the spring tension, just a little past when, when this uh, hits. So, you know, I use this uh, little cup washer from a, a different part of a Dixon mower, but uh, I liked how that, uh, that UPS here, maybe he's got something for me. I got a couple of things coming. So anyway, yeah, that's just a, a, an added feature. I don't know if it'll, uh, uh, you know, be functional or, or serve a, a real purpose, but, uh, it, you know, it's there, it's not hurting anything, and, you know, if I want to alleviate uh, it, I'll just cut another uh, piece of this stock and use it as a, uh, a shim or a, a spacer to take it up and uh, just do away with it, but I see no harm in it. Okay, so here I am bearing down with some weight on it, and that's what you get. It is real plush. It's a soft kind of a, a compression. I mean, the torsion bar runs uh, through here. And, you know, usually uh, you think of a torsion bar suspension as being non-progressive, like a coil spring is progressive. You know, the tighter it gets, the uh, uh, more resistance. But uh, this has a good feel to it. it it's really surprising. It, it feels almost rubber, rubber-like. But uh, apparently it's just the torsion bar. But I dig it. They got it right. I tried. I tried this uh, ten-tooth uh, little sprocket on that uh, jack shaft uh, uh, chain assembly, and uh, it wouldn't do it. It was too tight. One side I could get on, uh, the other I couldn't. It, it was just too tight uh, using the existing uh, length chain with the uh, uh, one added tooth on that small sprocket. Now. Maybe down at the other end where the other sprocket is, it's got, you know, 20 or more teeth on it. If I uh, stepped up to uh, one higher tooth number and welded that onto that shaft, that, you know, that would do it. It would give, uh, you know, a, a tighter chain, but not too tight. Uh, but that that's a big hassle, really. <clears throat> and then I went back and uh, I put the... Uh, uh, nine tooth sprocket on uh, and shorten the chain. This chain is uh, a shorter But uh, then I added the uh, the half length there and uh, just to double check I, I think I tried that before uh, To see if that would uh, cinch it up, but no, it's too tight too. So 
you know, the the only way I, I really have is to just go with, uh, you know, the factory uh, 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 nine tooth sprocket up front there and this length chain. There's no way to shorten this chain, add a half length uh, to uh, cinch that chain uh, uh, jack shaft assembly up. It just, uh, you know, once uh, or twice I put on, you know, some new chain uh, and that, uh, you know, it's not so stretched out and that, then it'll give it a little tighter. Uh, 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 chain assembly there, but uh, you know, it doesn't last for long these chains stretch out and uh, So yeah, uh, I guess uh, it's a no-go on that at least for the moment. I've tried uh, otherwise, I'll just uh, uh, Lubricate the chain uh, before I put it back in that way. I don't have to spray it uh, under the compartment there uh, I like this uh, bell ray stuff uh, I'm not compensated by them, but I'll, I'll pass that along because uh, this stuff doesn't fling around. Once you spray it on the chain, you know, you won't get it uh, uh, leaving a pattern, uh, flinging it around uh, under the compartment there. You don't want any oil or uh, grease to uh, get on those uh, cones, you know, because that can contaminate it and, uh, you know, make weak spots, I suppose, in it. I've never had that problem, but uh, in the past I've uh, not oiled uh, these chains uh, uh, you know, for kind of fear of that happening, but uh, now I'm comfortable enough uh, that, uh, you know, this stuff stays on and doesn't fling around that uh, I do. I, I lubricate them and, and put them uh, in there. You know, it's in close proximity to those cones, but uh, it's never been a problem with this stuff. I've used other stuff initially that uh, it would. It would leave a, a line pattern and I could see that it was uh, flinging around under there so uh, this stuff doesn't do that though so I'll just let you see it's going on here has a kind of a white uh, frosty look to it but uh, I like it works great and uh, I don't have to worry about it flinging around it's got the uh, little uh, applicator thing on there you know maybe I'm just getting a little more uh, uh, you know finicky with this. Uh, I notice uh, uh, the blades tips weren't all uh, uh, the tolerance wasn't all uh, uh, quite as good as it was before and so uh, I, I'm trying to rule out which one of them is the problem one or, or more of them may be the problem but I believe it's the center one. I've uh, used this uh, piece of angle to uh, reference the two outer blades and they seem to be right in sync with each other uh, to the uh, side wall of the deck so you know they seem to be good at uh, parallel spindles uh, with them making their blade tips uh, right in in the proverbial ballpark and I touched them both sides you can see they just start to hang up on there which is a good thing because anyway uh, the two of the two outer blades tips seem to be uh, in line, but it's this middle one. See how it doesn't touch uh, coming around here, but then it starts to hang up right about there, and then it drags. So it's it's raised up on the one side and low on the other. It doesn't touch down here, so it's it's low and high, beginning. Where is it beginning? Well, right in the middle, I thought. Anyway, what I'm thinking about is uh, banging right about here, right about here with the hammer. I might uh, go over these uh, these nuts and bolt uh, holes and use that as a, a way to uh, depress this area just a little. Okay, and since I was gearing up to uh, use this scissor jack, it's kind of a poor man's press. Uh, on the deck on the upper side, uh, you know, I thought, well, no, I'm going to be uh, 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 hammering on the underside. Why not just use this press uh, mechanism uh, and demonstrate it? Uh, so here it is. You know, less hammering, I think, is better. Well, I decided to depart from that press uh, because just pressing down this one side really wasn't getting me uh, going that well. I decided. No, it needs to have some uh, uh, pressing or hammer action from the other side, you know, in the opposite direction. And you can see it's kind of 
bulging up uh, here a bit, and uh, it looks the same on the other side. Uh, but uh, I think I got them uh, to a place where uh, they're almost perfect. You can see here. It touches a little bit there. And the same over here. Well, while I had this deck off and uh, I've been kind of going through the uh, upper side of it, uh, I noticed uh, down below here uh, a little attention uh, uh, can be given to it. And, uh, you know, when I uh, got this used and refurbished it, uh, you know, because it was a bigger deck, uh, I took the whole thing uh, top and bottom down to bare metal and uh, coated it uh, primarily with uh, stuff called P.O.R. 15 and uh, I really like the stuff and here you can see even after uh, three years of pretty uh, good use I I'm not really a, a commercial mower, but uh, oh During those three years. I probably mowed about uh, three or four hours uh, a week uh, uh, with this deck and uh, It looks like about 70% uh, of the POR 15 has stuck you know, it's a, a hard uh, finish uh, type stuff and uh, on top of the deck, it looks great still, but down below you can see uh, it did, uh, uh, you know, kind of separate from the metal, uh, uh, especially here where the blades go by and they throw uh, against this wall here. There was some of that uh, uh, caked up, uh, powdery, pasty uh, uh, grass that, you know, just piles on there. It wasn't too thick, but, uh, you know, even... Even, you know, without it getting wet, uh, if you have that stuff caked up on a wall, even over a winter, I, I believe it'll absorb moisture and then you'll have rust behind it uh, start to form. So I knocked all that stuff off with uh, just a wire brush, and an orbital sander, a little mechanical action in the crevices with a, a stainless steel toothbrush and uh, that pretty much knocked it down and I'm going to hit it with uh, this uh, rust converter. Uh, it's got some uh, phosphoric acid in it, I'm sure, but not as strong as uh, stuff I used previously, which was more concentrated, and you just spread it on with the brush. This is a little easier going on, but I don't know if you'll be able to see. Sometimes it flashes white when the conversion takes place. Now, this stuff goes on black, but uh, and you can paint right over it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, hit this thing uh, with a, a light uh, rust conversion uh, treatment and then go uh, in with uh, some undercoating. And, you know, deadens sound. That's what really appeals to me. Uh, you know, and hopefully it'll uh, stay on uh, pretty well as well. I, I suppose you could use some truck bed liner uh, uh, also, but POR 15 for hard, uh, tough stuff, uh, I do uh, recommend. But uh, I'm going to try this uh, undercoating under here. I've heard other guys talk about it, but I've never seen it, you know, in actual use or, or on a video. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to lay uh, some of this stuff. I've used this in the past on a truck. I like the Rust-Oleum uh, better. I used some uh, Permatex one time on a, uh, a gas tank, and, oh, I hated that Permatex stuff, but this uh, Rust-Oleum stuff is. It's uh, really rubberized, and, you know, it has a rubbery feel after it's uh, uh, dried, and you can paint over it. I'm not going to do that, but uh, sound deadening. I like uh, that idea. So uh, uh, next time you see this, uh, you know, it'll it'll have that light textured uh, undercoated uh, surface in here and okay and here's the underside of the deck uh, all undercoated uh, I used uh, four cans of that stuff I used uh, two cans for an initial uh, pass uh, completely covering the uh, underside uh, with uh, one real good thick coat but then I added two more cans to this uh, channel section here that's uh, undoubtedly where uh, you know, the impact is going. The way this uh, deck is designed, uh, uh, you know, it, it undoubtedly, we saw the rust uh, up against the wall. So that's where it goes. It hits and then uh, flows here. And also, the, uh, the deck has, uh, uh, you know, not a uniform uh, uh, skirt edge. You see that dip right there? I, I'm guessing that that is... Uh, a little bit of a lower channel so that it sucks air into here and draws the uh, the clippings uh, out this way. That uh, 
new idler pulley uh, it arrived today I put it in today I had to shave off a, a little bit of this uh, shoulder uh, flange on it because it it flared out and it just wasn't uh, uh, quite right for that uh, but uh, this is the one that uh, I'm taking out I, I didn't like it I, I thought maybe it was noisy but this one is whisper quiet just uh, silent and I was uh, bragging on the fact that these uh, polyplastic ones are quieter but you know, this one was a little noisy. There was a little grit, and uh, I'm going to address that a little bit. And I'm not going to—I don't think I'm going to have to replace that. This, but I'll—I'll I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, oh yeah, here is that pulley uh, idler pulley uh, a little closer up, and uh, uh, you can see I've uh, plucked out the seals. They come out easily enough, and without much damage, you just uh, lift up under there with a little, a little plucker. I use something off my pocket knife. Now I can't even. Seem to get it out of there with one hand. But uh, yeah, they, they pluck out easily enough. And if you need to, you can just flatten back and, and they pop back in easy too. But uh, with these uh, Chinese bearings, and you'll often find them with this uh, color seal on it. It's, they're metallic and vinyl and, uh, you know, most bearings are China. And, and the quality of the bearings is good. I, you know, I'm not bashing on China. I, I dig, uh, uh, you know, what they're doing and uh, uh, providing value uh, for, you know, everybody on the planet. But uh, oftentimes the uh, grease uh, is, uh, 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 you know, lacking. There's just not much grease. And uh, so it's always good to go back in. I, I believe I put this in. I didn't repack it. Uh, often I will. But on a pulley, you know, sometimes I'll just overlook that. I'll, I'll, you know, if I'm buying bearings uh, alone, then I'll repack them. But, you know, on a pulley, I, I usually won't. Sometimes it's hard to get to them, but on these, it's easy. And uh, sure enough, uh, I looked in there and, uh, uh, you know, it looked dirty. It looked uh, uh, a little like dust had uh, uh, sucked in uh, into those seals somehow. So I'm just going to uh, clean this and make some gas a haul here and... Uh, and uh, then I'll uh, make sure they spin fast and free without grease. And then I'll, I'll grease it up uh, real good. I've got some uh, uh, Lucas uh, red and tacky stuff. And uh, in that way, uh, you know, I won't have to replace this. Okay, and there it is, red and tacky. You can see the seal just goes right back on there. And you'll hear it snap in place. And that's pretty much it. And uh, whisper quiet. I mean, silent. Silence is golden. It was. It was. Uh, it was gritty sounding. And uh, now nothing. Nada. And it feels as well too. It just feels silky smooth. So yeah, I uh, won't have to replace this one. And uh, you know, I'm gonna go back. That brand new one I put in. I didn't. Uh, 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 check the seal and, and go in there and, and uh, lube it up. I'm going to do that on the, the very uh, uh, one that arrived today. Okay, and here's the deck uh, with the initial uh, fit up with those uh, new uh, hanger style that I'm uh, you know, thinking about developing right there. But uh, what I'm having is uh, the spring tension doesn't uh, you know, uh, fit up just the way I like it. Uh, you know, with the uh, with the uh, suspension wheels on here, you know, the attitude of the mower is uh, about like it was, but uh, the lowest setting on the deck is uh, lower than it was before. So the attitude is not uh, uh, just exactly like it was, but there's uh, solutions for that. So I can, I can cut out some of that, uh, uh, that hanger uh, height uh, to uh, get the deck to raise a little higher at the lowest setting and uh, relieve some of the tension on those springs. I, I don't want to cut those springs, but then there's uh, maybe an easier solution, and that is uh, right there at those uh, uh, forks themselves. You see those two holes there? The uh, manufacturer of those uh, recommends that you start them at that upper hole, and then maybe as the uh, springs uh, uh, or the torsion bar in there 
you know, breaks in a little bit, you know, the attitude uh, in front might start drooping a little. So they give you an extra hole to uh, just raise it back up. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and drop it down into that second hole. That will raise the deck a little bit. Then I can turn those uh, uh, nuts down there to relieve some tension as well. And maybe it'll, you know, all come together just right. But... Uh, if not, I can I can cut off some of that uh, hanger, lower the hanger to, to get all those proverbial planets to come into alignment. And, and then later, if the uh, mower does, uh, uh, you know, have th those uh, torsion bar suspensions kind of start drooping down over time, you know, I can just cut another piece of this... Uh, headset tubing uh, stock uh, to go right under there as a, as a shim. So I can raise the front end up that way if I need to. But I'm going to try to take the uh, course of least resistance with just uh, seeing where I'm at uh, by uh, putting that uh, axle bolt through that lower hole. Okay, sure enough, just that uh, change of the uh, axle uh, uh, brought all the uh, proverbial planets into alignment without any uh, uh, need for any other cutting or welding. And, uh, you know, I may do something uh, later, uh, you know, to make it more lasting. But uh, right now, uh, instantly, uh, it's, it's all good. Uh, the deck has been leveled. I got two inches uh, from side to side. It's setting number three. You can see about how tall the... Uh, deck sets up at a number three. I commonly cut there. Uh, uh, you know, it's not going to be exactly uh, like it used to be at number three, but it, it looks about right, a, a two-inch uh, height. And uh, up front, I got uh, one and three quarters, so, uh, and also those uh, spring tensions. I was able to uh, relieve some of that spring tension, and uh, they are groovy now. You know, they're, it, they're snug, uh, but without, you know, having too much tension on them. And here they are with a little build up around uh, the lower uh, portion and the sides, just so this is about, eh, it's not quite that, but uh, I did uh, need it to uh, stay, uh, uh, you know, narrow enough for the washer to get on in uh, that uh, quick pin. And I'm also going to shoehorn a uh, nylon washer in there too. So it looks like uh, all the planets are in their uh, so-called alignment. And I don't think I'm going to grind or try to soften any of those edges. Maybe that, that one little nipple there. But uh, uh, no, I, I plop them uh, in those uh, uh, deck uh, uh, hanger holes. And uh, they go in and they're pretty snug. And uh, But they give just a little movement. So uh, I think it'll be uh, just fine this way. But that one does uh, right up there. The rest of them, not so much. This was... Uh, zinc coated like galvanized and you know it's always a little nasty to weld on that stuff i ground ground it off pretty good but you still get that yellow poisonous vapor and it sometimes will jump up onto the tungsten but i i didn't have really any trouble so yeah that's going to be uh, quite uh, snug and uh, maybe uh, uh you know silent and here, this uh, rod that uh, straddles the uh, 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 chassis here and uh, raises the deck, uh, it, uh, it wasn't this loose, but it had about a quarter of an inch, and that could knock around and make noise. I I'm sure, you know, under rough conditions, uh, it was creating some chatter and uh, clanging. So uh, it's going to get one of these uh, behind here, too. Uh, you know, this has roll pins, and you got to drive them out, and just get something behind there so it doesn't chatter. And so much like this uh, seat suspension uh, implemented these uh, nylon washers in between these uh, uh, possible contact points, uh, it, it isolates them. And, uh, you know, the bushing behind this uh, adjustment knob or nut, and uh, even where, uh, you know, the suspension bottoms out, it's uh, got a rubber bumper and where it also it comes to rest in the back that has a rubber bumper so you know there's there's nylon washers in between all of those places if you look real close you can you can kind of see them sandwiched in between 
so there's no real friction points metal to metal and so yeah similarly you can see I've got uh, nylon washers uh, in between uh, a lot of these points uh, and uh, there's some uh, upholstery edge binder that uh, has vinyl in it if I put one on this uh, side for this alignment rod channel and on the other side so it uh, that pretty much makes that uh, uh, frictionless uh, as far as metal to metal goes uh, and there's uh, nylon washers under these and you can see that assembly what I was going for it, it, it takes up some of that noise and chattering clanging if you hit uh, real rough areas on this arm too that engages the uh, idler uh, you can see down here probably that there's a rubber bushing as well. Just makes things quieter. Up underneath on the other side, the same thing. I just closed my garage door open. I just my my re remote is in my pocket. We for the uh, engagement uh, for the idler pulley has uh, got a little rubber uh, bushing there too. So yeah, it's made things a lot quieter even back back in here you can see nylon washers and one last thing I'm going to do uh, before I consider this project complete is uh, kind of sound deaden and uh, uh, do some anti-vibration this uh, formed uh, uh, plastic uh, poly plastic uh, body panel here you see there's a gap and you, you can't really adjust it to where it's flush and even if you did it would vibrate uh, no matter what so at some points it's it's touching and you know the flat metal plate underneath but other places it's not so I uh, got some of this uh, neoprene uh, uh, foam rubber this is a medium uh, soft consistency at a uh, quarter of an inch I might uh, double this up but uh, this stuff was inexpensive and uh, delivered to my door for about 16 bucks and uh, I'm gonna put a layer underneath here maybe even double it up and that'll give me some uh, anti-vibration a little more sound deadening I bet you could do this on a, a lot of lawn mowers that have that uh, tendency where there's a, a body panel that just kind of vibrates and touches in some at some point so uh, I'm thinking this will do it up uh, uh, real elegantly uh, because it's so cheap and easy okay and you start to see the uh, uh, idea here it's just like a little blanket underneath I'm doubling it up uh, in the center on the platform portion you know doubling it up on the side walls uh, it got a little snug that way and there it is with that uh, single layer I left off the uh, double uh, layer portion on the center it seemed to arch up a little too much and I may put it in later but uh, for now I'm just going with the single layer I didn't uh, tack it in with any adhesive you just leave it under there and see how it goes and uh, if it squishes down uh, later and gets thin I'll uh, beef it up with some more Christian Livingstone here and here is the conclusion everything's been done the seat suspension the fork suspension quieting down the deck with all of those uh, little touches and uh, uh, you know truing up the blades and all that my uh, apartment complex I mow the uh, property it's it's done I did it a few weeks ago and you know the grass hasn't grown it's uh, December but this neighboring place has a little bit of growth and I'm just gonna sneak back here and uh, make some uh, uh, passes and uh, see see what kind of cut uh, quality we get I, I'm certain it's gonna be good but uh, let's just do it
that's not easy to see this uh, you know lawn has got uh, I don't know it's mostly Bermuda but then there's some fescue like grass over there and uh, you know it's making some hay I I uh, use a blocker I don't uh, side discharge so you know you can see a, a winnowing line on that one side there on each other pass but uh, no, I'm liking it in lieu of uh, some other uh, property to cut. You can see mine down there. It, it looks uh, real good still, but it's it's dormant. Over here, I've never cut this, but uh, no, the cut looks good. I might try to find some other property to uh, uh, test the uh, you know the finish cut. Maybe maybe there's one right around the corner. Let me maybe I can get. Uh, forgiveness more than permission. I'll just go down there and cut in between those other two properties between the apartment complex and uh, there's a, a credit union that has real nice uh, turf. So let me see if I, I can get away with that. Okay, I'm going to take a, a couple of passes on this here. process. Uh, the three main points were the uh, seat suspension, the fork suspension, and uh, quieting down the deck. It uh, All three of those things can be done on uh, most any zero turn mower I'm sure, or at least some some portion of them. On this particular Dixon it, uh, it was a lot trickier. I mean the fabrication because of the spindle uh, changes on those forks was different and uh, you know, for many it'll be just a, a drop-in item, and uh, same with the seat. Uh, it uh, this uh, uh, the old seating uh, mechanism was hinged, and I stuck with that hinged uh, mechanism. And uh, you know, these won't mount flush on a flat surface, so you got to have uh, uh, tracks for uh, sliding the seat forward and back to give it a, a little height uh, raised up off a flush surface. On this. That wasn't the problem because this uh, underside uh, is uh, all open anyway. So, and I don't want to slide this forward and back anyway. I want to keep it as low as possible. The cost was uh, relatively uh, uh, good too. Two nineteen for the uh, uh, forks delivered, one forty nine for the uh, seat suspension. A lot of little peripheral parts and materials. Put the project cost at uh, a little over 400 bucks, which was a good value to me. I'm happy as a proverbial clam. Uh, sound deadening, you know, that's cheap. Uh, if you just want to undercoat uh, your deck, I, I'll, you know, when I uh, go back and do something to the deck, I'll probably put some odor uh, undercoating on top, on the outer. Uh, coat of the deck uh, because I, I, I am I'm sold on the uh, uh, slight uh, sound deadening uh, uh, property of that uh, rubberized uh, stuff so yeah that's it and one last point on the uh, parts that you might need if you don't have an existing uh, John Deere uh, mower with all the parts that uh, would make that uh, Z-Glide uh, just a drop-in solution. You'll uh, want these bushings here. You'll probably want this uh, shouldered bolt, uh, maybe these spacers over here. Your existing wheel will probably 
be fine. I, you know, mine is a nine inch tall wheel. You probably get a 10 inch uh, wheel on there too without uh, any trouble. Uh, but this uh, place, uh, Green Parts Direct, uh, was uh, fast, reasonable, and you can see prices down here. Let's see what those bushings cost. Uh, let's see, they're 11, number 11. Uh, they're eight bucks a piece for those pieces of poly plastic. And uh, yeah, the uh, conclusion uh, was nice. I, I tell you that uh, thing, riding it, it's it's a soft feel. The the deck uh, is cutting better. It's it was a little hard to judge by uh, you know what I had to cut, but uh, uh, undoubtedly I'm going to be uh, giddy next season uh, running that thing a full season getting better cuts, having a softer ride, just it's plush. It's uh, really comparatively plush now. So uh, there it is. Uh, here's the source, Green Parts Direct, a uh, few little trace items. Uh, I don't, I didn't buy the uh, forks themselves, the uh, suspension forks from this place. They probably carry it as well, but I got it directly from uh, Z Glide. And, you know, as you can see over here, I'm anti-statist uh, and, uh, a stateless person so you know it's not that I'm anti North American uh, not at all I'm I'm a free market uh, type and uh, and the Z glide is uh, apparently made uh, you know in that rust belt area where there's still a lot of talent and they're uh, uh, cranking out uh, uh, an innovative new product so you know I support that I'm, I'm all for it I, I recommend the uh, Z glide uh, units uh, uh they're cheaper than uh, oem stuff without the uh, suspension in them and the same with that uh that uh, seat warehouse uh, suspension seat i believe that uh, uh was produced and uh designed and uh, is uh, uh shipped right from that uh, same uh, great lakes area where there's still a lot of uh, engineering talent and uh, they're able to compete uh, even with asia because uh you know, they have a good product and it's priced well. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, some of the North American producers are starting to take a note from the Asians uh, in, you know, not relying on these little state monopolies in, uh, you know, the idea of patents. You know, they, you know, all that stuff was imported uh, from the old world through the U.S. Constitution into this so called new world. All that old stuff, the little monopolies granted to these mercantilists and merchant uh, law stuff about, uh, you know, granting a, a monopoly on, on an idea to, to people for a, a term of years and just pushes the costs up for everybody. And a lot of these people were coming up with these same ideas at the same time. And uh, so, uh, you know, the Chinese don't seem to rely on patents so much. They have them, they use them, but I, I think they use them in a more uh, defensive way so they can produce without being harassed and uh, you know they're they're not designing into their welding units and stuff that I I've noticed uh, you know little proprietary features that you know make it tough to uh, uh, get uh, add-on parts or extraneous items that uh, you know you don't have to go to them for they make everything generalized so it's just easy to get uh, parts from any source for for their units and i think uh you know some of the uh manufacturers here in of, of uh, lawnmowers because there's still a lot of north american uh, lawnmowers made I, I think most of them are uh, uh you know produced on the north american continent so uh you know i think uh, they could learn a thing uh, from the asians and not trying to make everything, uh, you know, rely on patents and little monopolies that, uh, you know, we consumers uh, understand what they're doing and we don't appreciate that. So, uh, you know, I do appreciate, uh, you know, the uh, seat warehouse and the Z Guide products. They're innovative products. They're uh, good products. They're, they're really sound. I mean, uh, I dig them. So that's it. That's... Uh, that's what I got, and uh, I'll see you next time, maybe. Okay? Bye-bye.